Some say it's a man's world, but it would not mean much without the hustle of strong women and our unique voices. This show is dedicated to a different kind of conversation. No cooking recipes, no celebrity gossip, rather business strategy and inspiration for women who are doing their thing and running their world. This is a show for and by Boss Ladies. And yes, I am talking about you because the adjective boss is defined as excellent and outstanding. And the noun ladies is defined as a term of respect for all women. You are excellent and outstanding, even if no one said it before. So it's time to put respect on that status. Thank you, ladies, for joining us for another episode of Boss Ladies. And today we are talking about something that I think is so critical for us. And that is, number one, being qualified but sidelined. And number two, making what your work. I think so often with the qualification and being sidelined, we don't always have an opportunity to get a seat at the table. So what are your thoughts? How have you been able to get a seat at the table, even if it's making your own table? Talk to me. So in my position, I have found that finding out what the pain points of your company are can be integral in moving up positions. So for example, I found out we were lacking in certain monetization at my, at my job. So I put myself in a position to go there. Yes, Jana. So I love that by being the person that not only found the pain points, but then brought a solution. That's amazing. That's mm-hmm. a good strategy. I need to start using that. How have we been able to make a seat at the table, even if it's starting our own company? My whole life has kind of been just making my own way at the table, and that doesn't always mean starting your own company. For me, it started off with just like knocking on the door. I would show up and beg, ask for the interview, and I would show up again, and I'd say, when do you have time for coffee? When do you have time for this? When do you have time for that? And I followed up, and I think being consistent to show someone your amount of dedication and how much you want something was important, and that was my early career in in real estate and in other places as well. Um, And then I just absorbed everything I could and, and showed them what I could do, And there are times when you get sidelined and someone doesn't see your worth, then you have to step away or look at the bigger picture and maybe start your own thing or figure out how to move up by creating a different kind of position within where you are. That's key. I love that you mentioned persistence as well, right? I love persistence. That's so key. And I think for most of us that are in sales, we start to understand it's not just one or two. It might take a hundred knocks, right? Kanisha, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm up for shaking my head (laughs) because I totally understand. Um, Started out in commercial real estate uh, 14 years ago in Arizona. And commercial real estate, it, it wasn't an industry for me, I would say. I had to literally make my way. Um, when I started out with the company, they gave me an office and a phone, and they wanted me to cold call. And cold calling just did not work for someone named Kenesha. <laughs> so I had to figure out, okay, if I'm going to be in this for the long haul, what do I need to do? I was in a company where I never met my broker five years, never met my broker one time. Never. So, you know, usually someone would, there would be someone to mentor or teach or train or kind of set the path or lead the way. And so I had to make the way. So whatever I wanted to find out or learn, I researched, I read, I went to classes, I went to get my master's um, in real estate development. I, every, the highest designations I could find, I went after those. And now it's almost like the four letters behind my name precede me. So the name Kenesha doesn't even matter because the other degrees. Yes made the seat at the table. I love that. So ladies, now based on the fact that, like you said, sometimes we have to be more educated, we have to be more persistent, and we even have to be more solution-minded than most other people in the company. Now that you're at the table, you're bringing so much value. How do you make sure you're compensated for that? I have a great opinion on that. First and foremost, it's knowing your worth. You have to know what you're worth and go for it and not be scared to ask. Know what your industry rate is and what you want and ask for it. The worst thing that can happen is no, or you'll get countered. And if you get countered, you can recounter. And it's as simple as that. It's just having the balls I was say, you to, say it. <laughs> to, to ask for what you want. Right. I get that there are sites that like Glassdoor in different mm-hmm. places, but what if it's a newer industry? What if it's a hush-hush industry? How do we find yeah. out? what our going rate should be. What are your thoughts on that? Well, Glassdoor, for example, but also just researching. And 
your own internal goals. Mm -hmm. If you're not quite sure, do the research you can and then set your rate what you think you deserve and then ask for that. You know, and I'll mention, I know when I got started on the training and coaching and speaking side, I didn't know what my rate should be because so often either the people that were speaking, they were already really established like a Tony Robbins where it's like, okay, I don't know that I can ask for that. But then I started going places and giving a number and the funny thing, and I'm so grateful, many of the people were like, you should charge double that or you should you know they started to give me an indication of that you're lowballing yourself you should ask for more and i was like really okay well, that, <laughs> that's a perfect example of asking people that are in your industry right. don't be afraid to ask exactly. because especially women we want to help other women grow hopefully and asking mm -hmm. yeah right. i love it any other thoughts i have a follow-up to the, to the story similarly like that's kind of how my my business came about um, I was working at a law firm and we couldn't come to terms on what my number should be. And finally, I just thought, you know what, this is their bottom line number and that's fine. That's what I'm worth to them, but I want more for me and so I'm going to go do it. And I'm thankful to say that through hard work, um, I've surpassed what I thought I was worth and now I want more, right? I want, I want to keep building more and growing more as I fall into different roles and positions. I love it. Yeah. Any yeah. other? I was going to say, I was in uh, corporate America a few years ago. Uh, big name, big box retailer, that's all I'll say, and at their headquarters. We all know who that is. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> one. But it was a great experience. And, you know, a few months into the position, there were a number of people that I was assisting and helping and teaching along the way. And they just knew that I was making way more than them. So they just threw out their number. And then I said, well, then there's some stuff. And I said, so they just threw it out because they knew I surpassed them. And come to find out, I had to sit there and negotiate to get what I got. They got it, and, and, and some of them were men, majority of the time were men. And so I said, okay, so this is the number. And I, and I tried even after being there a year to get a different salary because my value was there, my worth was there, I'm getting all of these other uh, positions and promotions and everything else, but same thing. That's their bottom line, this is what they're willing to do. And so it was like, make a decision. Do I want to have a salary and a limit, or do I believe in myself, take the risk, and jump out there and go into commercial real estate again full time and start at zero at 100% commission. And I took the leap. I I'm worth it. it. <laughs> you are. We all are. I really love it. And until next time, here's to your success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us.